One of the major forces that affects a group of organisms' uh, evolution over time is this idea that Charles Darwin came up with called natural selection. And the idea of natural selection is that in a population, a group of organisms, some organisms who happen to have a genetic trait, if that genetic trait increases their chances of living long enough to have offspring, then they will. And they will pass on more of their genes to the next generation than those organisms who don't have that genetic trait. Now, this leads into a discussion of something called reproductive fitness. Reproductive fitness is how scientists measure an organism's relative ability compared to the other organisms in that population. It's their relative ability to survive and leave offspring bring in the next generation. So what are some examples of natural selection? Well, with bacteria, um, we use antibiotics to kill them. Now when antibiotics were first discovered and used, penicillin was considered a nuclear weapon in the doctor's uh, toolbox. If somebody had a bacterial infection, boom, penicillin killed them all. And it was considered a wonder drug. People figured it could be used to kill or cure anything. Well, nowadays, penicillin is considered just a little pop gun in the battle against bacteria. Most bacteria nowadays, if you get a disease and you're given penicillin, there's a really good chance that that bacteria is going to live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why did that happen? Well, that's because initially there were very few, if any, bacteria that were resistant to penicillin. But as it started being used in the environment, those bacteria that had a slight resistance to it survived a little bit longer than those without it, and they had more offspring. Next generation, there's a few more of these antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And every generation since then, we've been attacking them with the same penicillin, and eventually we killed off all the ones who were vulnerable, leaving just the resistant ones. In some cases, there are some bacteria that are essentially immune to every antibiotic we have. Now, an interesting thing has been discovered. There was a country in Africa where most, if not all, of the bacteria were completely immune to penicillin, so they simply stopped using it. After several decades had gone by, some doctors had somebody who was sick and they had nothing else, and so they said, hey, let's try some penicillin, and they gave it to them, and it wiped them out, wiped out the bacteria. The guy was cured. And they wondered, what? Why? Well, remember, to make these resistances, the bacteria had to spend energy to uh, build the defenses. Well, without the penicillin in the environment, building a defense against something that doesn't exist is a waste of energy. So a few mutants that lost their resistance had the advantage. And so in that environment, the best reproductively fit bacteria were ones who weren't wasting energy making defenses against an antibiotic that was not present in the environment. So now I can understand why scientists are so intrigued by this idea, because if we can use it, we can perhaps better protect ourselves against bacteria and viruses and other things in the environment. What are some of the requirements of natural selection? Well, one, you need to have more offspring being born than can survive to adulthood. Two, you need to have competition for resources. Now, resources can be a, a kind of a nebulous term, because it can refer to mates, it can refer to food, it can refer to light or water, all sorts of things. You need to have genetic variation or diversity within the population. So you need to have not a group of individuals who are all pretty much the same, but you need to have diversity for natural selection to work upon. For example, there's a kind of lizard where they're all females, and the females will lay eggs, but those eggs don't need males to fertilize them. They can grow into yet another lizard. Problem is, this means that all of the eggs laid by a lizard are all identical to the mother lizard, and all of her grandchildren will be identical. So this lizard can, if it lands on an island, quickly populate that island and take it over. Unfortunately, there's a mite, a kind of little tiny insect, parasite, that can attack that lizard. And if it gets a foothold into that lizard population, they're all susceptible and they all start to die very quickly because there's not variation to help them develop a resistance. Finally, some of these varieties need to have an increased chance of surviving long enough in order to reproduce. So you need to have variety, but some of the varieties need to be actually helpful. Here's an example in spiders of how natural selection will reward behaviors that initially we think of as being kind of silly or foolish. There's a kind of spider where the male spider will engage in courtship rituals to encourage a female to mate with him. She eventually will agree, and he mounts up and starts to mate. And then he does something really freaky. He does this weird little backflip and starts to feed her his body while he's still mating. 
You may be thinking, why do that? Well, turns out this is a way for him to provide more resources for his future offspring because spiders don't have pockets. So how can he give food to help his babies? By feeding his body to his wife. Why does she sit still in order for him to mate? Because she knows she's going to get a gift of food. And he continues to mate while he's feeding her his body. That's an advantage because she will sit there and let him continue mating because she's in the middle of eating. So it works out for both of them. And that's why that weird strategy wound up becoming more common in that spider species until now all that spider species, I think it's boxer spiders, follow that particular strategy. So natural selection is a pretty simple idea. Once you get it, it'll be hard to understand how you didn't understand in the beginning. It's just, if you have something that helps you survive long enough to have babies, then you will have babies. If you don't have that something, then you die. No babies once you're dead, because it's really hard to have offspring once you're a member of the dead.